Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Barker, the founder of Connect Our Elders. And today is episode 36. And my guests are Paul and Dinah Massaros. They are the owners of Silver Lining Home and Care in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank Hi. you. Nice Hi. Having you. Oh, of course, my pleasure. So before we uh, get into some specific questions about um, Silver Lining Home and Care. We'll we'll start with you, Paul. Could you please share who you are, your background, and and why you guys decided to do this? Sure. So um, I'm Paul Masaros. I'm the owner and administrator of Silver Lining Home and Care, and uh, I've been a registered nurse for about seven years, going on seven years now. Uh, with my background in critical care. Um, and it's, it's been a long dream of mine to start one of these uh, homes, especially with seeing the need in the community uh, where, you know, elderly people, they're often, they don't have a lot of options where, where to go. So, and, you know, the burden falls on the family to find a solution. And, you know, that's, that's where we come into place. Um, it's a, um, this house, it, it's a small family environment, um, not medical. So, um, mm -hmm. that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And Diana, share with the audience who you are, your background and, and your why behind having this, uh, silver lining home and care. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so I've been a nurse also, um, a little over 10 years now. Uh, I also work in ICU. Um, I started out actually my nursing career in a, uh, larger local uh, nursing home, excuse me, nursing home. And um, seeing, you know, the, the amount of people that one nurse has to take care of um, was a lot. So um, that's one thing that, you know, kind of got us thinking about that. That was, you know, years ago. And so um, mm -hmm. I decided mm -hmm. to just take the plunge. <laughs> Now, I think it's wonderful. And we talked about this on Friday. So for those of you listening, I'm not sure if you saw the virtual tour we did um, of their lovely, uh, lovely home. Um, what What is it that you say in uh, Tennessee? I heard you guys mentioning it. And it's the first time I've heard the term. I think it was uh, home for the aged. Is that? Yeah, I just thought that that was so neat. Well, that's a technical name um, that the state gives a home like ours. So there's a home for the aged and then there's assisted living facilities and then there's like nursing homes. So there's categories, I guess. Of, right. and yeah, there's, you can also have like an actual hospice home where you provide the hospice care. So but ours is under the home for the aged category. And I think different states call it different names. So probably on the West Coast, it's called. Senior care, uh, home, senior care senior home or adult care, adult, adult care. foster care home. Something like mm -hmm. that. I, I've always just referred to, so basically what you guys have, I've always said, oh, a boarding care. And so hearing home for the aged, I thought that that's a really, it's a really nice way. It's a nice way to say it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get into what, what sort of care is provided um, through Silver Lining Home and Care? Um, so like Paul mentioned, uh, we're not a medical facility. We don't provide the medical care, um, but we do help with medication uh, assistance and, you know, us being nurses, we can administer the medications as well. Um, then we can, we provide all the meals, snacks, um, laundry, housekeeping, ADL assistance, feeding, bathing. Um, mm -hmm. So we do go, um, we have live-in caregivers and, uh, and then we do go, um, we try to go every day to check on our residents and help the caregivers mm -hmm. want, um, give the care. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I think, for families to know that um, we're nurses and we see them every day and we can gauge, you know, something's off, maybe something might be a, a little off with the resident. We can kind of see that just you know, we can gauge that a little bit more quickly maybe than somebody that might not have that experience, the nursing right. experience. I do definitely think that that's a, a huge plus. Um, and the living caregivers that you have, uh, both of them have yes. lots of experience. So uh, Valentina and what, what is the gentleman's name? Marinelli. 
Not right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're absolutely wonderful. And so on, on that note for a moment, let, let's talk about the food that is provided in your home, um, in the home and care. Yeah. So, um, that's one of the things I love about this house is we have a garden in the back. Um, and, uh, my, so the living caregivers are Paul's parents. Um, mm -hmm. so my in-laws and so they, uh, they take, they planted everything from seeds and then they grow the vegetables and, um, we use that in the cooking. So, uh, my mother-in-law has worked in this type of facility, uh, particularly they're a lot more common. I feel like on the West coast, uh, you know, Arizona, California. Um, so anyway, oh yeah, Oregon. She's worked mm -hmm. in this home for a while and um, and she did a lot of the cooking and the cleaning over there and taking care of the uh, of the residents. And so she's very experienced with making food for um, them. And it's wholesome, um, not frozen, not powdered stuff. It's the healthy right. food and it comes from our garden in the back. And delicious. I, um, <laughs> I So oh. for, for the audience, when I was there on Friday, I was sent home with some treats and um, I, I've eaten most of them. They're absolutely <laughs> delicious. So so let's talk about um, your your dad, Paul, and his backgrounds and his experience with, with helping people over the years. Right. So he's, he's been a pastor all his life, you know, dealing with all kinds of people in, and their needs. Uh, uh, great listener. So if you know, he's the type of guy you want to keep a conversation with. And he's he's definitely he can hear the need and um, you know pray with them with the residents if they want to. And uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. he, he comes with a lot of experience on that side. Um, and, yeah. No, that's great. So I wanted to make sure that we spent some time um, talking about the care staff because. You know, on the West Coast, I, I have toured many of the boarding cares here, and um, I just I, I think it's wonderful that the the staff that you two have are so uniquely experienced. You know, and I, I feel like it's just a very comforting and secure environment, right, for somebody to have their loved one in your home with with uh, you know with your parents because of their experience. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. So let's uh, talk about, so we already talked about what type of care is provided in the home, right? Medication management, administering the meds, activities of daily living, so showering, dressing, meals, mm -hmm. um, toileting, right? right? Okay, let's talk about, so uh, So what are the options? Um, are, are you guys able to provide respite care? So for instance, for those of you listening in the audience, right, maybe you're not quite ready to move your mom and dad um, out of their home or out of your home permanently, but you need a break. So can you guys explain to the audience what exactly that means in this industry when 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 you tell the family about taking a break? Right. Well, I mean, the summer is coming. Uh, I'm sure there are many families that have their taking care of the, the, their loved ones and they uh, they've been doing it for many years and they need a break. So that's where we come in, where we can offer a minimum of seven days respite care, where we can take care of their loved one uh, in the setting of, of our home. And, uh, you know, we, we can take care of all their needs. Um, so respite care for us, it's set minimum of seven days. Uh, mm -hmm. We would like for the family to stay or the, the resident to stay longer, uh, obviously. That's where they can experience more of who we are and what we are. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we do offer respite care too. Okay, great. What about visitors? So let's talk about that. How, uh, what, what can you tell the audience to make them feel comfortable? Is there a, a visitor's policy or how, how does that work for family members if they choose to put their loved one in your home? Yeah. How does visiting work? They, um, well, there are visiting hours. Like we don't really want family members showing up at, 4 a.m. <laughs> um, uh, so after breakfast, we try to limit between meal times um, because if you come at a meal time, then sometimes the residents get distracted and won't eat, or you know, with the meds, it kind of gets confusing right. or whatever. So um, between meal times, uh, they can stay. Uh, I mean, we're not very particular. You can only stay an hour. You know, in the hospital, you have very strict guidelines right now with COVID and everything. Um, 
But uh, so they can come, they can stay, but not all day long eating like the food and the snacks and stuff like that. So we do have to kind of limit that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Right. But the doors are open for, you know, grandkids and, and family members. They can't all come at one time. Right. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they can come visit. That's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. Because I know that's really important. It, yeah. Yes. And encouraged for sure. Okay. Uh, what about... What are your limits on accepting people? For example, will you take a resident that is on hospice um, or is receiving home health, physical or occupational therapies? Right. So that's where uh, our medical background comes into place a lot. So we, we don't shy away from uh, residents that have multiple comorbidities. Uh, they can be on hospice with uh, PT, OT uh, treatments and um you know, we can take those to um, home health. If they have these therapies at home, they can have them at our home. Right. Um, that's just something that goes through with the, the doctor has to order that, you know. Right. Of course. Right. The, the doctor's request. OK. Mm -hmm. What about who do you partner with? in the community, other resources to be able to deliver the, the best level of safety and care to your residents? Yeah, so we work with a uh, nurse practitioner that comes, uh, she'll come within that first week of them being admitted, um, not not with the respite care people, but people that come and stay longer term. Um, so she'll come with uh, within that first week to assess them. And we give the family members that uh, option to, to uh, move their primary care. So she would be the primary care. Or they can be second. Mm -hmm. Or they have the option yeah. to do secondary care. So one of the two. And really what that means is she comes once a month and assesses them and they don't have to go out into the office. Um, and then she's also on call for us if, if anything comes up, you know, somebody starts getting a little confused or, you know, develops symptoms of a UTI, we can call her. Um, so she's, she's there for us. And then we also work with a company that is um, like an urgent care on wheels. So they come to our house <laughs> if they're not life or limb threatening. Mm -hmm. We give them a call and uh, they come to the house, and um, so they would avoid an ER visit. And they right. can do things like uh, check labs and get the results right away because they have like an iStat machine. Um, they can do like x-rays they can order x-rays they come to the house um they can even do I iv hydration like if they're dehydrated um even first doses of antibiotics if they need it you know if they're yeah. getting sick and they can do that first dose and then call in the the uh prescription prescription yeah and on that note we also work with a pharmacy that um delivers the medicines directly to us so the family members don't have to worry about oh um mom's running low on her uh, Norvask. So I need to go pick it up from the pharmacy and bring it to them. So, so it's great. So actually the level of support, the interdisciplinary team that the residents have is, is much larger than what we even were thinking at the beginning of this conversation, right? You have the two staff that are very experienced. You two that are nurses, your nurse practitioner, the mobile urgent care, Mm -hmm. Farm is, you know, the, the medications delivered. It's, I mean, that's wonderful. Right. We're so the family to... really, the family really can have peace of mind that you have yeah. every area adequately covered for their loved one. Right. And yes. That's our goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did talk a little bit about this, but we have a very small um, caregiver to resident ratio. Um, so we have, at this home we can do, we can have our three residents here and that just helps us to really focus on the three residents that we do have. Yeah. Um, our goal is to, you know, get bigger, uh, have a little bit more, maybe six to eight, but that's max in one home. Cause then you kind of lose that family feel, that family vibe. And that's really what we're going for. So much of silver lining is, is what we do as a, as a whole family that includes his parents, that includes our own kids, you know, we have uh, three kids and we bring them sometimes after school. And I think that's so important for that multi-generational bonding. You know, maybe they, they 
maybe their the residents grandkids live far away in a different state they don't get to interact with the younger people so um so that we have them there they come they can talk to <laughs> the kids the residents and talk yeah so yeah. Uh, that's a beautiful point you know bridging bridging that generational gap that yeah. you know i i don't know about you guys but i had the you know the fortunate opportunity to grow up with my grandparents my whole life mm -hmm. and and there's been all kinds of studies and articles that have been pushed out about the importance of that type of relationship so as you said diana right uh, families are more geographically separated these days. And so if they don't have their grandchildren nearby, um, this is sort of a, a dynamic that's an added benefit for, um, it, it really it really benefits their psychosocial well-being. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so let's talk about what exactly is your house like? So uh, it's a small ranch home uh, in, the middle of ten, in the middle of Hendersonville. Uh, close to Indian Lake for those that are in the area. Um, we renovated the home to be ADA compliant, uh, wide doors, uh, bathroom is, that's my favorite room. Uh, <laughs> it's so, beautiful, uh, it really is. It's, it's beautiful. So it is. It's very roomy. Right, curbless <laughs> shower so you can roll in a uh, wheelchair for those that are uh, non-ambulatory and you know it just makes it easier for the staff to provide the care that they need. Um, we have uh, one single room, uh, beautiful room, uh, very very roomy with a, a lot of lighting in there. And then also uh, we have another shared room um, that's a little bit bigger. So um, yeah. And one uh, on that note about the rooms, um, we purposely kept the, the walls bare. Um, it didn't put anything in the rooms because, uh, I mean, we have, we have the bed and the nightstand, right. but mm -hmm. like decorative pieces, I, um, purposely left those out just cause we want to give the residents options to bring what they have at home. And so right. they can make the room their own, uh, the shared room will have to have shared space, of course, but, the you know, mm -hmm. make it their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great because that will, uh, help them with the transition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then we okay. also have um, we have a really nice seating out, outside seating area in the back in and the front. You know, it's beautiful. Got lots of beautiful flowers. My mother-in-law has a great green thumb, and my father-in-law actually with the vegetables. That's his. That's definitely his yeah, that's his, his thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there, there's like a little swing out there. Uh, not a not like a swing, like a playground swing. Mm -hmm. Although we do have one of those too. Yeah, but. not 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 one of those attached to the to a tree, you know. No, 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 no. got you, got you. Swing type thing. Um, I think it's really important for elderly to get fresh air and to get natural light. Um, yeah. Our house has a lot of natural wide windows, a lot of um, natural lighting in the house. Um, the, yeah, I think that's really important, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of times in uh, institutions and hospitals, you don't, it's dark and you don't see that sun. And I think that's really important even to prevent like depression and just get outside, um, take a little walk or stroll in the, in the neighborhood. It's a quiet, well-developed neighborhood. Um, so I think that's really important. It really is beautiful, you guys. So, um, you know, I really want to make sure the audience understands and that they <laughs> it's worth their time to to reach out to you guys and schedule a tour with them because this home is absolutely gorgeous. The neighborhood is gorgeous. It's very safe. Uh, if it, it feels like a home environment full of love and care, uh, healthy food, natural light, all of these things that we're talking about. And sometimes people will just say these things and they're kind of like overselling it, right? right. And then under delivering. But I, I can actually say, because I've been to the home twice now, that every single thing that you guys are saying, I almost feel like you're not talking it up enough <laughs> because <laughs> it is so gorgeous and has such a good energy in there. Um, you know, if I, I would move my loved one in there, so. Me too. <laughs> she would move me in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, uh, what what makes you guys different? Um, I think we're unique in who we are as, as a family, as, you know, us being nurses, pastor, homemaker, um, bringing in our kids. 
um, it's important to us that our residents feel like they're part of a family and not in an institution or a hospital. So um, mm -hmm. I think that is different. It's unique, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Type of homes are not very, um, like group homes are not common in this area. There's a lot of options for um, independent living and assisted living and, and nursing homes, but there's not these type of options. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's not for everybody, but it is for those people that want something different. Right. And so mm -hmm. we're to provide that um, to provide that care for them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do you have anything to add, Paul? Um, no, I think she pretty much covered it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I feel like our um, we may not be a great fit for for everybody. You know, I, I, I personally know people that would prefer to go in a big institution that have from a, a oh. beauty salon to, you know. But oh, happy hour or happy something, hour, you know, right. that's, we, we're we small, we can't provide that, but. Um, we are a different vibe, so. Yes, um, yeah. You know. And it, which is why, right, I really encourage people to reach out to you and, right. and come go take a tour so they can see for themselves, you right. know, whether whether you're a family who has a loved one where you're trying to start learning about your options, you know, and on that note, I encourage you be proactive with that get educated now right understand i please don't wait for an emergency or a crisis to happen understand that they are available as an option um but i also for the audience i encourage advisors right you attorneys and wealth managers um heck even social workers from these skilled nursing facilities that you know that you're sometimes needing to understand placement options take the time go take a tour so that way you can speak to it authentically, right? So you'll be able to identify when silver lining home and care is a right option for your clients or for your patient discharging. Um, okay. Do you have social activities at the home? Yes. So besides the you know, moving night puzzles, bingo, uh, we also offer music therapy and uh, we emphasize a lot on the, on the natural activities, so uh, a walk outside, uh, the outdoor time. That's I think that's very important. Uh, we recently had a, uh, a resident that we took him every morning before the heat came out. We took him every morning, and that was one of the times that you would see him smile a lot of times. <laughs> we stroll down uh, outside on the back, and uh, he just loved nature. So uh, that's very important for them. But we also partner with a senior center in uh, uh, in Hendersonville, and for those residents that are able to travel, um, you know, they offer classes, different classes. So uh, yeah, like that's important for them too. Chair yoga, strength and conditioning. Right. So we can take them um, one or two times a week for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Two, like two miles down the road. Right. So we can take them and do that. Wonderful. So how can people? contact you to learn more the best one i think um is through email uh silver lining home and care at gmail.com um that way we can kind of set up a time where we can talk um that mm -hmm. works for them and works for us um mm -hmm. you can also call us um our phone number is on we have a facebook page so um you can like the facebook page and call us there's our numbers on there um okay uh the the and we're also working on a website so okay going soon too but the the best way i think to contact right now is through um email okay great all right well i think that wraps it up um as a reminder my name is sarah barker founder of connect our elders the main intent of connect our elders is to empower aging and we do that through providing education around various resources that are available to elders and their family members trying to help them make decisions um, and then also the navigation right so educating them on the resource but helping them navigate those resources so that way they are feeling empowered in making the decision and then of course ongoing advocacy to make sure that they are receiving appropriate services and are happy with that uh, thank you, Paul and Diana, for being my guests today. Thank my you pleasure. for having us, Lucy. Thank you so yeah. much. My pleasure.